Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, beautiful people. Honest Am here, the creator and writer of the Honestly Sis newsletter, a bi-weekly newsletter geared towards millennials who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I'm here for another daily, actually it's a new moon reading. <laughs> new moon reading remix with the daily motivation. I was like, oh, all right, y'all see I got some hair? I have, this is like so new to me and like I, I gotta get used to it, y'all. I've been getting people stared at me. I don't know how to be fun. I gotta learn, y'all. I gotta, I'm like in a bad bitch maintenance program. I <laughs> mean, like a bad bitch management program. Um, okay, anyways, but let's focus. So guys, welcome back. I hope that your week has been going well. Um, my week has been going okay. Um, just really quickly, um, I do not use God. I mean, I do not just use the tarot. I use God and cusses in the same sentence and I may mispronounce some things, but if it does not stop showing me the guy, it will not stop me. Um, guys, if you, uh, get anything in this message that touch you or move you, please give me a thumbs up because that helps the channel. And it also helps me know that you are out there and that you're loving and, um, you know, you're loving and you're vibing with what I am saying. Okay. Angel number 106. Also, make sure that you check the message, uh, make sure that you check down below um, because there are always additional information, guidance, as well as angel numbers um, to help you along your journey. So, guys, this new moon in Libra, it is about to go down. Like, this is what the fuck we've been waiting for. It. Also, I found out what was the planet that was in retrograde and it is um, Saturn was in retrograde, which is the planet that's about judging and a lot of restrictions. Um, so let me just do a really, really quick run now. The new moon is going to be in Libra. We know that Libra is all about being the diplomat. Uh, the diplomat, it's, um, rules the seventh house. The seventh house is all about our relationships and partnerships. So you want to look at your birth chart and, um, see where Libra falls in your birth chart. And then you also want to look at, look at what sign is in your, um, what sign is in your seventh house. Um, for me, Libra actually sits in my first house, which is actually kind of surprising to me because I didn't know that. I don't know why I didn't know that, but I'm like, yeah, hmm. So, um, so it's going to affect me a little bit differently. It's, I was going to, um, my focus will be about, um, my relationship with myself and how I, um, you know, how I identify with myself, how I bond with myself, how I look at partnerships with other people. Um, that's all the stuff that's going to be affecting me. So you will want to look in your birth chart and see where Libra falls um, in your birth chart. And then you also want to look at what's in your seventh house. And also, I forgot what's in my seventh house. Um, my seventh house. Hmm. My seventh house is in, is this Virgo? I think that's Virgo. No, that's not Virgo. Oh, that's, my seventh house is in Aries, which is very interesting. Oh, because I think those are the opposite. So my seventh house is in um, Aries, which is also where my sun sign sits. Um, so it's like all about me dealing with like my passion, my drive, and how I relate to other people with that. And you're number 303. So that's just an example of how you can look at your birth chart and look at how, how this is going to affect you personally. Also, what's going to be going down is that Pluto, um, Pluto, which is the planet that's all about transformation, our psyche, um, our soul, that has been in retrograde, um, and it's going to be going direct come October 6th. And then we also have the planet of Saturn, which is was in Aquarius, which was the one that I was telling y'all that we had to be very mindful of our decisions that we were making because Saturn really rules karma. And so if while uh, Saturn was in retrograde, you were really, really mindful of not making decisions in fear, then and this um, as Saturn started going direct on October 10th, you would start getting the benefits of that. So lots of very exciting things. Also, the other thing that I wanted to tell you guys before we dive into the cards is that I want us to start, um, what I realized this weekend is that it's not just enough for you to write out your um, new moon intentions. I feel like you have to, everything is about action. I mean, it's not even about action. Everything is about like the trifecta. And so if you thought, if you thought a thought, you write it down, now you need to act it out or do something to show that you, uh, to sh do something to show that you are really intentional about this intention that you're setting for the new moon. So say, for example, my, um, to put this in layman's term, I told you guys that uh, Libra fell in my first house um, and also my seventh house is what's going to be affected, which is about my relationships, which is about um, my partnerships, which is also about me and how I feel in my body, right? 
So because I knew that Libra was in this sign and Libra is all about beauty and harmony and all that stuff. This weekend, I really went out. I have like some roses sitting right here where I'm recording. I went out and got like these different vases and stuff because I wanted my house to feel very romantic. I went and got my hair done. I went to do, go do something different, something pushing myself out of the norm. I went and got a um, facial. Like these are things that is setting the tone of who I want to become because I want to be one of the women that exude femininity. I really, my goal and my intention for the rest of this year is to really step into my feminine power. So I'm really learning how to do that. And I feel like the way that we truly set the intentions is by putting the action behind that. So say if your intention is that you want to, you know, become your best body, you want to become your best self inside and out, and you want to focus on your body. And so you're the, the, you can set that intention in your journal, but what you should need to also do is to put action behind that is to go sign up for a membership or to go sign up for a class or something like that. So you understand what I'm saying? Actually putting intentions behind the things that we want. Okay. Put action behind the intentions that we want. Angel number 551. All right, guys. God, guardian, angels, ancestors, we come to you as clearly and as humbly as we know how to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Um, thank you for just, you know, guiding us along our way. Now, God, we ask, what should we look for in this new moon in Libra? What's going to come to us as Saturn and Pluto go direct, God? What comes to us in this beautiful month of October? Allow no room without confusion. Let us know what potential obstacles, roadblocks may be in our way, or anything that you consider good or deem worthy for our highest good. God, and God, God, I should. All right, we're going to do uh, three or four cards only. Three or four cards only, God. Mm -hmm. Three more, please. Or maybe one more. One or two more, God. Whatever you're doing right now. One or two more. All right. Going once. Going twice. There we go. All right. So, the very first card that came out, Angel number 703, is responsibility. And I actually really love this because I feel like what God is saying is that now it's time for us to be responsible. I told you guys that we are, um, if you've been on this channel for a while, you've been journeying with me, um, and you've been actually trying to apply this stuff to your life, we're kind of moving out of that phase of where we're thinking about it. And we're, you know, we're planning. We've done all of that. We know our mindset. We know our shortcomings. We've wrote about it. We did our morning pages. And now God is saying, this is the season of being. This is the season of doing. This is the season of stepping into our responsibility. And so I feel like during this, um, during this October, uh, but not even October, during this new moon in Libra, I feel like God is asking us to be very mindful that we are doing our part, that we're being responsible, um, that we are following up on our intentions. A lot of you guys could, um, I ain't going to say you guys, a lot of people just set intentions and they ask God for stuff, but then they don't want to do anything differently. It just goes back to what I was telling you before about putting actions behind our intentions. God is pretty much dumbling down and saying, okay, so say you want a new relationship, right? What are you doing to uh, show the universe that you want a new relationship outside of your ass being on a dating app? What are you doing? Like, what is your energy like? What are you offering to the world? Like, what are you, how are you taking care of yourself? What's your, and again, I keep going back to like, what is your energy? What is your offering to the world? Like, what are you exuding? That's why I went and got these candles and these vases because I want my life to be romantic. I want to be you know, I really want romance and I want to experience real love and real like um, intimacy. And like, I literally, I'm like, I realized that it's something about like having just like having my, my house lit by candlelight when the sun go down, it just, it exudes like this romance, you know, this romance and this, you know, romancy, romanticized, rom I don't even know what the fuck the word is, but it just... You know, it brings out this different type of energy. And then I went and got like pink roses instead of red roses because I realized that I'm not really in the place where I'm like being passionate and I'm giving my love to someone, but I'm really learning how to be flirty and, you know, like just take care of yourself. I just feel like what God is saying is that you have to be responsible for the energy that you put out in number 922 and to take it out of like me and like what I'm going through. Like if you have, um, if you say you want to change your career, 
Um, and you're not, you know, changing your resume. You're not trying to learn a craft. You're not trying to figure out a product. If you're not doing anything, you can't ask the universe to do it for you. Like you have to show it. You have to show up halfway because we're co-creating with the universe. Okay. Forgiveness. Um, every time I see this card of forgiveness, I don't see forgive others. I really feel like God is saying, forgive yourself, you know, forgive yourself for the times that, you know, you didn't necessarily take care of yourself. Take the, forgive yourself for the times that you wasn't necessarily responsible. I mean, like if, if we're being real, like a lot of us just don't have those tools. They just, we didn't have, uh, the right, uh, let me, uh, give you a very personal example. So I realized that, uh, this is, ooh, don't cry him. but I realized that like, because of my childhood, I was in relationships with, uh, with people who were very mean to me and like, they were like, when I really think about it, like they weren't very nice to me. They weren't really a friend to me. Um, they weren't really supportive of me. Um, they were like low key, like trying to down talk me and like, you know, when I really reflect on it, it makes me sad because I'm like, damn, like I was so desperate for friends that I just literally accepted anything. Like I was at service to so many other people. But the one time I asked for somebody to be there for me, it was like, bitch, what's, you know, like it was like they were, they could never show up for me. Um, and like, and if I'm being completely honest, I realized that I was very angry for a long time because I felt like I've been such a good friend to other people. I have been so accommodating to other people. I've done so much stuff for other people, but when I needed somebody there for me or when I decided to start choosing myself, all of a sudden, all those people disappear. And so that made me feel a type of way. And <laughs> whenever 11, 27. Um, but I realized that I had to go through that process to realize like, oh, that's why it's so important not to betray yourself. That's why it's so important to know yourself. That's why it's so important to when you get those clues in the beginning of where, you know, your gut, you know, your gut clenches and you feel that kicking your gut or your solar plexus like, no, but you ignore it. Like, that's why it's so important so that you don't have to go down this route again. And so... You know, it was really hard for me to realize that a lot of my life, a lot of my relationships were very superficial. Um, and I get why they were superficial because I didn't know myself, you know? So it was like, I didn't, I didn't allow myself to go so deep with people because a lot of people that I, were even, I was even in a relationship with, they didn't know how to go any deeper. So, you know, also I realized that by me, because I didn't know myself and because I just wanted to be liked so much, Angel number 1220, um, I was faking it and I was pretending and a lot of people that I was in relationships with, they were faking and they pretending and they weren't being true to their self. So if somebody isn't being true to their self, to other people, then how can they be true to you in a relationship? Right? So it's like, I had to like go through all of that and realize that, yeah, you know, it's my fault why I'm in the position that I'm in. Like I can blame my parents. I can blame my major. I can blame my growing up. But at the end of the day, the reason why I made those decisions that I made is because I didn't know any better. It's because I wasn't, I wasn't awakened. I wasn't aware. I wasn't the person who I am today. So I forgive myself. Okay. Angel number 1301. The other card that came out is expectancy. And this is what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. This expectancy, God is saying like, once you start to set a responsibility for yourself, to set responsibility for where you are, once you start to forgive yourself and like you just set your mind that no matter where I've been at, I am worthy and I am deserving of having a love that I've never known. I am deserving of having a little life that I never known. I am deserving of acquiring whatever I desire. Once you know that in your heart, God is saying you need to walk with a sense of expectancy. Because like I was telling y'all, if you have been mindful, if you have been conscious or if you've been really trying to improve yourself, you should be, at this point, you should be expecting some shit. You should be feeling some stuff. You should start, if you don't see, um, if you don't see your, uh, your growth, that's, just, that's, again, that's your responsibility. It's time for you to go back and look up your life and see where you're not forgiving yourself and where you're being so hard on yourself that you can't see that you have truly grown. 
So angel number 1411 with this card of expectancy, what I feel like what God is saying is that for a lot of us, um, because we've decided to take responsibility for our life, because we decided to not be ruled by fear, because we decided to forgive ourselves and forgive all those people who let us down, we're about to go through this season of expectancy, which is blessings and manifestations happening way quicker than we could ever imagine. Angel number 1434. Um, a really funny story is that um, earlier this year, whoo, shit, earlier this year, I'm gonna tell y'all that card. Earlier this year, um, not even earlier this year, last week, my neighbor, he had this pizza, right? But like, he wasn't really paying attention to me and he was walking inside and I was kind of walking from the back. So like, he kind of walked away and I was about to call out to him like, hey, let me have some of that pizza, you know, like just making a joke or whatever. But he passed and I let it go. So I kept walking and I took Cuddy on a long walk. And then it was just like, by the time I got back from the walk, I was tired and I'm like, damn, I just really don't feel like cooking. And I'm like, fuck, I don't feel like going out to go get no food. So I was just kind of like in my, you know, feelings or whatever. But as I was coming back in, my neighbor from earlier, he was right there. So, you know, we go in the building together, we get in the elevator and we're just talking and I'm like, yeah, I'm just so tired and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, you know, that happens, especially when you're working hard, angel number 14, 30, 1534. And I was like, yeah, I was like, no, I just don't feel like cooking. He's like, well, you don't need to be cooking this late. He's like, why don't you just come upstairs and get some of my pizza? And so I was like, I kind of manifested this pizza, like in hour, like not even an hour. It's because, and the reason why is because I released the expectation. I wanted the pizza. I saw that he wasn't going to look at me. I saw I didn't have his attention. And so I let it go. And because I let it go, it released it to the universe. But the universe heard that I wanted the pizza. I ended up getting the pizza. And what I realized, I tell you that story to say that if God can deliver you the pizza, he can deliver the bigger shit. Okay. So you should be in a reason of expectations. And I know that there has been something in your life like engine number 1616 that has been happening or that you've been wanting stuff and you've been seeing it just randomly flow into your life literally y'all y'all know i do my my um task list every month and this is the first time i ever decided to put shit up there like put, make a dentist appointment make a doctor's appointment like i'm telling i don't know it was like as soon as we came in october i just felt this new burst of energy and so i was hesitant but then i'm like facial i put it on there i put facial and a massage and just went on about my life. Do you know, I went, I logged on to um, Instagram. And this is a place that I have been watching for a while. They advertise this lady who does facials. This lady who does facials is, first of all, it's only $50, right? Then she go to her page and she shows this before and after picture of one of her clients. Now, guys, you can't really see. Maybe you could, no, you can't really see it. Um, Maybe a little bit over here. You can see it a little better. But guys, when I was growing up, I had very bad acne. So my skin has like little scars or whatever. Like I can look very pretty, very photogenic. I am pretty. In fact, I gotta even realize that I'm pretty, but um, I can, it's just like, it's not as smooth in person. And, it, and in low key, I'm kind of self-conscious about it. But then it was like, when I accepted that I can become the person that I want to be. And like, I put that up there. Like, I'm going to start taking care of myself and start taking care of my face. Like I want to be one of them old women that young girls just like, oh, I can't wait to get older. You know, like just want to be one of them fly ass older ladies that like 60 years old, but still look 30. Okay. So, you know, that's what just an attention that I set. I go to this lady and like, it was just like the best experience ever. The place was the best experience ever. Like when I tell y'all, it was just alignment and I was just so happy and so I tell y'all that to just say like when you are starting to take responsibility for yourself and you realize that okay I haven't always you know been my best self I haven't always been good to myself but I want to change that get into the mode of expectancy because God is going to start delivering stuff and it's on you to act upon it I'm telling y'all there was definitely a moment when I'm like okay am, am I tripping like why am I booking I'm getting my hair done I'm getting my nails done should I be really getting the facial can I afford this and then I got this thing up here. No fear, live abundantly. Yes, the fuck I can't afford it. You know, like I can't afford it. I work hard and I can get it. And now I just feel like I'm just on this path to just becoming my best self. Like, okay, you probably can see it a little bit, but like I can already see some changes with like, cause you can't really see it on this side. So it's like, I can really already see some changes just in that one treatment. So just telling y'all, whatever you want to do, you can do it, okay? You can become who you want to become, but you have to have, you have to take responsibility. Let me shut up. Last card that came out is love, y'all. 
So what God is saying, if you want love, if you want to live a life of love, it's your responsibility to not live in fear. And that's what this all this is all about. This is all about making that switch from living in fear to living in love. Okay. Let me make this really quick. God, clarify this message of responsibility, forgiveness, expectancy, and love. God, what are you trying to get us to understand? What is our energy towards this? What do we need to be mindful of? Please allow no room for doubt or confusion. I should. Sorry, y'all. I got so excited <laughs> to tell y'all all the stuff that I was going, I've been going through. But it's just like I feel it. I can feel the changes taking place right now. Okay, yep. I love it. Um, okay. Responsibility, the Ace of Cups. And this is the problem because you feel like the Ace of Cups came out reversed. The Ace of Cups upright is like God giving you this fresh new start, this fresh new beginning, this passionate new drive. And I feel like the reason why you don't feel like you have a friend, a brand new star is because, again, you're not taking responsibility for it. The thing is, you think that God is just going to offer you this, this cup. He's just going to offer you this beginning. But I keep telling you guys, we're co-creating. Free will reigns supreme in this 3D matrix, okay? So you have to decide the responsibility. You have to decide, hey, God. I'm ready to start living life differently. If under this new moon in uh, Libra, you decide that, hey, I want to live from a place of love. I want to have, I, I feel like I'm worthy of living the life of my dreams. You have to decide on that. And then you have to make actions to, to, to signal to the universe that this is the, the new start that you want to go on. And you do that by your intentions, your actions, and the thoughts that you take, okay? So what God is saying is stop waiting for him to give you this, this brand, this, that you really, you literally want God to move heaven and earth and you ain't did shit, you know? So it's like, you have to take some type of responsibility. You have to do something on your end to bring in this blessing, okay? If you do that, what God is saying, he'll move towards you. You say that you want the brand new beginning and then God and the universe works towards you. God, I love this God. God is showing us how we co-create with the universe. Again, we co-create with the universe by first setting our intentions because everything is about the trifecta, right? We first set our intentions. We say the words out loud and then we show it in our actions and the steps that we take on a daily basis. You do those things on a daily basis of taking responsibility, making sure that you never move in fear. That's And it's not saying that you need to know everything. You don't have to know every step of the way. But if every day you decide, I'm going to be responsible for my life, I'm going to make conscious choices and conscious decisions to walk in love and to walk in, in the direction of my dreams, God will forgive. God will rush towards you and give you the fresh new cup. This and also I feel like that's the relationship. You guys need you need to repair your relationship with God. I feel like you're so angry with God. Thank you, God, because this is also the forgiveness. You're so angry with God because you're like, God, I've been praying to you, I've been asking you for stuff, and you're not doing anything in my life, you're not changing anything. And what God is saying is that it's because you're not doing you're not doing anything, my child. All you're doing is just spotting out requests, but you're not doing doing anything. Faith without works is dead. So again, like I was telling you, intentions, you know, ground down your intentions through actions. That's how you signal to God that you're serious about moving on and moving on to this fresh new beginning. Okay. For expectancy, the Ace of Wands came out reverse. And again, it's because you're just waiting for it. You just want it to come out of nowhere. I'm telling you guys, we're co-creating with God. You can't, the thing is, like, even if, even if you ask God to do something in your life, right? You say, God, please just, you know, God, please give me a new job. Please, God, can you just, I want to work in a career that is in alignment with my job, like with my happily ever after, right? And then you get this idea to, um, start looking at uh writing or to start getting into like fashion design but yet you just like no no page <laughs> number 2337 no god god i'm asking you god please give me a new job and then god sends you an idea to be like well you know why don't you go down to your cousin's school and help volunteer no god no god because you and because the, the, the thing is 
God speaks through your ideas. God speaks through your thoughts. God speaks through your intuition. So it's like, if you don't follow up on your intuition, you can't be mad at God because you're not having a fresh new beginning. It's because you're not choosing to go on that journey. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's our responsibility. This is how we help the universe. We help the universe by making conscious choices, decisions, and actions. We take responsibility for ourselves and for our lives and what we do on a 3D where we put our intentions on and then the fresh new start will come, okay? I don't want to go off on the church, but that's why I don't fuck with the church, honestly. Because a lot of, and I'm not even going to say everybody because T.D. Jakes and Sarah Jakes, uh, Pastor T.D. Jakes and Sarah Jakes have been doing amazing work. They really talk about shadow work. They really talk about taking responsibility because that is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. If you're waiting for another Jesus to die on a cross for you to have power or for your sins to be forgiven, you're going to be waiting forever because it's already happened. That part is already done. The resurrection of Christ is when you decide to take responsibility for your life and to step into your God-giving divinity and start co-creating with God, which is setting those intentions and then putting actions and words behind those intentions to show the universe, this is what I want. Again, it's like I was telling y'all last week. If the universe is giving you signs of, okay, you're getting getting different job offers or you're getting different things coming in, but it doesn't match what you ultimately want, it's on you to ground down in love and be like, I'm not moving until the right thing come, until something, to, to, to God deliver me something in alignment. And that's different than you just not moving at all. Do you understand what I'm saying? One, taking responsibility for your life is actively on a day-to-day -day basis communicating, making conscious decisions with the universe. That is that's saying, I want a new job. You get different offers come to you. You look at them. You ask if it's in alignment with where you ultimately want to go. If it's not in alignment with where you want to go, you push it away and you wait for the right opportunity to come. That's different than you saying you want a job, you want something different, but you're not doing anything to make it come about. Do you hear what I'm saying? One is patiently waiting, surrendering to the universe and the divine, and the other is just sitting there and expecting some miraculous shit to happen. It don't work that way. For love, what God is saying, you're too fucking scattered. You're too, you're too, your, your focus is on every which way. And also, for some reason, I hear this seven of cups. Look, and it's all about cups, cups. This is all about your passion, your drive. You're so, you, it, again, it, it, we, every time I, we had a message that came out and I want to say that was our last, uh, maybe full moon reading. It's all this stuff that you want to do and you're panicking. You're like, God, I want to get my love life together. God, I want to get my, my money together. God, I want to have an emergency fund. God, I want to be a better citizen. God, it's so much shit that you want to do. It's not that people don't want to be, a like people want to be fucked up people. It's just a lot of stuff that you want to do. But what God is trying to tell you is that instead of you trying to be your smart self and try to figure out how to do every last one of these things, what God is saying is that if you just focus on yourself, taking responsibility for your choices, your actions, and the, and the, um, your choices, your actions, and your thoughts, and you only allow love to lead, everything else will take care of itself. Do you know what I'm saying? Everything else will take care of itself. Y'all hear me on this channel. I want love. I want a great career. I want a new house. I want another doll. You know, like it's so much stuff that I want. But guess what? I realize is that Instead of me trying to figure out how to get all that stuff together, I just need to get me together. I just need to focus on me and embodying love and filling myself up and doing all of those things so that I can attract it to me. That is our power, not only as women, but as spiritual beings. That's what it means to balance the yin with the yang, the masculine with the feminine. It's what That's what it means to take responsibility in your life. It's when you know how to Sit in your power and attract the things to you. That's what this is about. We're learning how to attract things to us. God is this, and it's not even just about attracting things to us. This is this is God is saying, this is how you be a spiritual being. 
You become a spiritual being by taking responsibility for yourself, by forgiving yourself and forgiving God for not always being there for you and you for not always looking at God correctly and for looking at him like a Santa Claus and not really working on your relationship. Once y'all two can mend your relationship, then you can start walking into this season and then feeling like you're a fresh new start. Then you can, it's not, you're not so confused because you know that as long as you just keep allowing love to lead, God will deliver everything else. Okay, God, one final message, responsibility, forgiveness, expectancy, and love. God, clarify this message. What is this new moon in Libra going to bring to us? How do we take responsibility for our self and for our choices so that we can have that fresh, that fresh new beginning, God? How can we move into a season of expectancy? How can we just forgive ourselves so that we can allow love to lead? A lot of room for doubt and confusion. I'm only going to focus on the first two. <clears throat> the first one about them. So the first one that says, my request does not, my financial, re my financial success does not require hard work. Angel number 3013. What did I just tell you? This is what God is trying to get you to understand. He wants you to stop focusing on the external and the little picture and just focus on yourself and like becoming your best self, becoming one with yourself. Because when you become one with yourself, when you take responsibility for yourself and, and you tell yourself, I have the power to co-create my world, I have the power to create my reality, then everything will come easily to you. You don't have to worry about what algorithm you need to know, what, what rooms you need to go in. Because when you get grounded in yourself, you'll just know how to move because you'll know how to trust yourself. Yeah. If you believe that you must work hard in order to deserve the money that comes to you, then the money cannot come to you unless you do hard work. Financial success or any other kind of success does not require hard work. It does require alignment of thought. You cannot simply offer negative thoughts about things that you desire and then make up for it with action or hard work. When you learn to direct your own thoughts, you will discover the true leverage of energy alignment. That's what God is trying to tell you. This is why I came out reverse. Because the thing is, you're not taking responsibility for your life. You're still giving your power to the outside sources. I'm going to go to our uh, law, of, I mean, to our work your light deck because there's a card in there that speaks about how the angels, your spirit guides, uh, shit, I don't know, the aliens, nobody has power if you don't fucking say, hey, hi, I choose to work with you. I choose to let, and that goes for the evil. That goes for the demonic shit. You have to open up your vessel to that shit. You have to say, hey, and I ain't about to say it, I want that to invite that into your life. So this is why I want y'all to get and understand. Stop getting fucked up on here, all these YouTube videos, allowing people to have you worried and scared about somebody putting curses on you. Can't nobody put shit on you unless you give them the power to put that on you. That's what God is trying to say. You have the power. It's your responsibility to decide what type of life you're going to lead. You're not about to keep being mad at God and keep blaming shit on him when you have a fucked up mindset in the beginning. Okay? Why I'm so angry? Why I'm angry? Calm down. It's just nothing to be mad about. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I got really angry. For forgiveness in the Knight of Wands, what God is saying, this is not my role. This is not my role to make other people happy. This is the problem. Especially, this is why social media got so fucked up. You are out here trying to live your life for people you don't even fucking know. You out here trying to impress some bitches you will never even meet. You're out here trying to get some niggas that you would never even talk to in real life. Like, let's put all of this shit in perspective. What the fuck are we out here doing? This is what God is saying. You are so caught up in what everybody else has and how everybody else moving and why God not listening to you and why this person being blessed and you ain't being blessed and why did did that? This is your mind. Your mind is so fucking scattered. It's all over the place. And it's because you're so focused on everybody else instead of taking responsibility for yourself. The first thing that this car says is that if you believe that your, that your success re, uh, is required for hard work, then you can't get more money unless you do hard work. We've heard this 
time and time again. People talk about changing their life just by changing their thoughts. And you sit up there and be like, that's some bullshit, but you ain't even try. You haven't even tried for a month, for a day, for a week. You just so fucking like in your mind about it that you won't even try to change your mind. No, you just rather live your life for your mama, for your daddy, for your boyfriend, for your husband. And guess what? When it, when when it, when you go into the in the cave in the grave, it's only gonna be you. When it's time for them to sprinkle your ashes, only you gonna go in that fire, boo. So stop living your life for other people and stop worrying about what the fuck everybody else got. That used to be me, and I say this from somebody because I understand it. I used to be like, oh, I don't understand how she got that. And how can she be this? And how can they be this? And that's not fair, and they not a good person. And, and I'm gonna have to realize, I don't give a fuck about what none of them people have. I don't even, even if I had the nigga that they had, I wouldn't want it. So it's, it's like, put it in perspective. You don't even want the shit that you looking at. You see these bitches out here with these busted ass niggas that look fucked up and they fat and all this other shit. And you see them with they love and they couple pictures and all of a sudden you feeling bad because they, they found some ugly nigga to date them. Who cares? You can find somebody too. <laughs> you can find somebody too. But you're not, it's not going to happen by you hating on other people. It's not going to happen by you living your life for other people. What I realized is that what really helped me is my sleep hypnosis tracks. And also, again, it's like learning myself and like learning, having a relationship with God and like seeing my the glimpses of my own future and seeing my own skills and like seeing the growth in my own things. And it's just like, damn, like, I don't give a fuck. I don't want what nobody else have. I want to see this life. I want to see my lifeline play out. Like I'm being dead as honest. There's nobody life that I want right now, except for probably Beyonce's, but you know, oh, that's typical. <laughs> that's typical. <laughs> but it's nobody. It's like, no, I don't even want Beyonce life because I don't even want Jay-Z. You know, like I love him. He my God, daddy, but I wouldn't want to fuck him. You know, like that's Beyonce's husband. But anyway, so it's like, there's nobody life that I want but mine. There is nobody dream that I want to fulfill but mine. So guess what I have to do? Turn on my intention inwards, baby. I can't be comparing myself to everybody else because my shit don't look like theirs. My bus is not going to fall like theirs because they don't have the connection that I have. And that's what God trying to get y'all to understand. The reason why good people ain't winning is because y'all say shit like, hoes is winning. All the evil just is going. All the billionaires is wrong. Meanwhile, all us good ass people with good intentions and good hopes, we just so fucked up in our mind because people have used and abused us that we don't even love anymore. Anymore. That we don't even have hope anymore. That we don't even have joy anymore. Like you don't even see the blessing that you still believe in fairy tales. You don't even see the blessing that you still believe in miracles. You don't see the blessing in that. And that's why it's not happening. You don't see the blessing in just having a dream. You don't see the blessing in just, you know, having a having something to look forward to. People are so fucked up mentally here. That is what I realized was I remember I used to like do my like, you know, do stuff for honestly sis and do my stuff here. And I used to be like, oh, is this is this going to matter? Are people going to love it? And then I realized like, what the fuck else am I going to do? What the fuck else? What else do I have to do other than make this dream come true? What else do I have to do other than bringing this thing to a reality? Nothing. I ain't got shit else to do. I ain't got no friends to go visit. I ain't got no man to keep me distracted. I ain't got nothing else to do but to bring this dream about. And maybe you got to get there. Maybe that's the mindset that you had to make. But I had to realize that why am I comparing myself to people who I wouldn't even want to have a conversation with? People who I don't want to be in contact with. So why am I up here being envious of them just because I see them living some shit on social media? Take responsibility for your life. Uh, for expectancy... Uh, with the Ace of Wands, it says the story I tell is the basis of my life. And uh, look at this mindset, your attitude towards your mindset, and then also the story. So what did I tell y'all? It's about your, your thoughts, the thoughts you think, the words you speak, and the actions that you take. This is God simplifying all of this. So right here, it says with the Ace of Wands and the expectancy, I'm actually going to read this card. There is no right or wrong way to tell your improved story. It can be about your past, present, or future. The only criteria is that the only criteria that is important 
is that you are conscious of your intention to tell a better feeling story. Improved version, an improved version of your story, telling good feelings short stories throughout your day will change your point of attraction. Just remember the story you tell is the basis of your life. So tell it the way that you need to be. I start telling myself every day, oh, I'm in my season. It's me season. I'm in my winning season. This is the time where all my hard work pay off. This is the time where I see my blessings. This is the time where I see my growth. And I feel it. I feel it in my stomach. I feel excited when I'm waking up. I feel excited when I like come on here. I had the best weekend of my life last weekend. It wasn't because of no nigga, no bitch, no nothing. Because of myself. <laughs> because of myself. Okay. Do you know how beautiful that is? How freeing that is? To be able to just bring myself joy. To be confident in myself. Mm. Now when I see shit on social media, be like, oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to meet my husband. Oh, I can't wait to meet my boo. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, when I do this all throughout the day. It's your number 404. Last thing, why do I want and when do I, why do I want it? When you acknowledge what you do not want and then ask yourself what it is that I do want, you begin to gradually shift the story. You begin to, um, look at this. God is telling you how important it is about the story that you tell. When you acknowledge what you do not want and then ask yourself what it is that I do want, you begin a gradual shift into telling this telling you begin a gradual shift into telling of the new story and it's a much proved point of attraction. So again, if you're on a job that you don't like, instead of focusing agent number 4040 on the job and how fucked up it is and how crazy the people is, you tell yourself, Oh my god, this is telling me that I need harmony. I want to have a life of peace. I realized the other, when I, this weekend, I'm like, you know what? My job is low key preparing me for my real life because at the end of the day, I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to work from home. I'm going to be a full-time creative. So I need to learn how to work from home. I need to learn how to be okay at home. I need to learn how to, you know, create my own routines because this is my life. So it's like, again, changing the stories that I tell myself. You get the essence of what you think about whether you want it or not. Because the law of attraction is, inher is inherently consistent. Therefore, you never only telling the story of how it is. You are also telling the future experience that you are creating now. With this love and why do I want it and would it come out with the seven of cups? I feel like what God is saying is like, you know, instead of feeling overwhelmed about all of these different areas that you want to do or um, all these different areas that you want to improve and trying to figure it out all on your own, like God is just saying is that when this area do come to mind. So say, for example, I really do want to get on top of my finances. Instead of being like, oh my God, I suck at my finances. I'm such a horrible person. Angel number 1155, I just say things like, oh, you know, this is so great. Like I actually, I have, a, um, I actually have like little uh, post-its around my house that says I'm a money magnet. Um, I've been doing like a lot of like money and law of attraction, like sleep hypnosis tracks, because I recognize that this is something that I, you know, I, this is the area that I'm kind of weak in and that I want to be better in. And so it's like, God is saying like you, this is, again, it's taking responsibility. It's not saying like, I guess what I'm trying to get you to understand is that I'm not asking you to just be like, throw caution to the wind and only be like, I'm loving light. I'm only allowing love to lead. It's like. I want you to take responsibility and be like, you know, yes, I know there's a lot of things that I want to fix in my life, but instead of worrying about fixing all of those things, I'm going to worry about fixing myself, becoming one with myself, making sure that I'm moved by love. And then when all of these other things come up, I'm going to start telling myself a better story about how I'm going to improve it, what it's going to be like, why I want to improve this certain area and so on and so forth. You hear what I'm saying? Like I also have been doing that where... Um, like when I see something that I want or, um, I don't know, like I, I do explain like, well, see God, this is why I want my own business. <laughs> like I was like, uh, this is so funny. I'm so corny. I'd be like, uh, so say for example, like I see something in the news that ignore that, that like irritates me or, 
Um, it's like something trending on social media that irritates me. And I'll just be like, see God, this is why I want honestly sis to be a company. This is why I want honestly sis to be a magazine because then it could be a common narrative and we could talk about this. And da, 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 da. Like, you know, like it's just, uh, I'm corny, <laughs> but that's what I do because I realize, like, um, you know, I don't want to work for nobody. I want to work for myself. Like I want to, I want to create my own world and my own ecosystem. And I just want to show people that things don't have to be the way it is. Like a very random story. I was uh, listening to like the Jason Lee and the Karen story. And like, to me, I was like, honestly, the moral of the story is just like, don't be a shitty person. Like, don't, you know, like, don't start off being a shitty person. Don't try to be a shitty person to put yourself on and you will be okay. Like, what I realized what God has been showing me is that, um, you know, I told y'all, I see like a lot of like gossip people and a lot of bloggers and so I'm like, damn God, like, this is not fair that they get to have like this big platform or not even like it's not fair, but it's like, damn, like they get to have this big platform. And sometimes it can make people feel like, well, and that's what Jason said. He said in his story that he felt like, you know, like when he was trying to be positive and stuff, people weren't paying attention to it. So he started being messy and that's when he started getting on. Um, but see, the thing is, like, when you start being messy, like, that energy attracts things. Like, what you put out is what you eventually get out. And that's e exactly what happened between Karen and, and Jason. And so, what to me, what it's been showing me is that it's just not worth it to, like, change who you are or try to become something more appealing to the mainstream just to get on. Because what's going to happen is... Either you're, you know, you're going to lie to yourself and then it's going to fuck up. And it's just, to me, it's just like, it just doesn't pay to be a shitty person. And for some reason we have equated like the entertainment industry to make it seem like it's okay to be a predator, to be a shitty person. Like, well, that's just how, that's just what you got to do to win. That's just the industry. That's just how it is. That's Hollywood. And it's like, but you don't have to be that way. It's like, it don't have to be that way. Like, and it's because, you know, good people like us are just being quiet or we don't, or we're like, well, well, that's just how it is. I don't want to be in that industry because it's a fucked up industry. Instead of being like, you know what? I'm going to be in that industry. I'm going to change that industry. And I'm going to show that you can win by being a good person. And that's honestly why I decided. I'm like, I'm not about to change who I am. I'm not about to switch up my content. I'm going to keep running my race. That's, you know, that's what Oprah did. And I realized, I will say that story for another day, but I was also beefing out with Oprah energetically <laughs> me and Oprah was beefing spiritually but like I just realized that's what that's how Oprah became who she was because she wasn't worried about what this person was doing and what that person was doing she just ran her way her race she did what her heart and her gut told her to do and it made her a billionaire and if it can do it for her and if it can do it for Jay and if it can do it for B and if it can do it for Drake and if it can do it for Ree it can do it for me okay Last thing, God wants you to know, it comes not by magic, by law. This Ace of Swords came out. And so what God is saying, when you start speaking differently, when you start telling yourself a different story, um, your life will change. And it's not happening because of magic. It's happening because you are choosing to take um, action. You, I mean, because you're choosing to take responsibility of your vibrational alignment. That's what this is all about. God is telling you it's time for you to take responsibility of your vibrational alignment and what you're offering to the universe. It just goes back to that same, that, that old saying is that if you keep settling for less than you deserve, how can you ever get what you deserve, right? That's what God is trying to get you to understand. It's your responsibility. It's not God. It's your responsibility to take ownership for the choices, the actions, and the thoughts that you're speaking. I'll read this for you because I hear somebody saying what it say. Start telling a better feeling story. Again, all this is about story. Start telling a better feeling story about the things that are important to you. Do not write your story like a factual documentary weighing all the pros and cons of your experience. But instead, tell the uplifting, fanciful, magical story of the wonder of your own life and watch what happens. It will feel like magic as your life begin to transform right before your eyes. But it's not by magic. It is by the power of the law of the universe and your deliberate alignment with those laws. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, I was, I have been feeling that. Like, I was just like, Phew. I was like, I didn't even want to like put it on Twitter. Like my fucking manifestations are coming in like, and it's just small stuff. So it's like, if I can just, if I can trust God on the small stuff, then excuse me, if I can trust God on the small stuff, let me start trusting him on the bigger stuff. So that's why I'm really switching in and be, I mean, that's why I'm really switching my intention to like hone in on my feminine energy 
and like learning to like really love like because that was also another thing that I realized like because I was so angry my heart was kind of like mm, motherfuckers oh y'all did me wrong that's how my heart was so I had to like I'm trying to like open my heart on up love on myself you know anyways responsibility ace of cups my my success does not require hard work forgiveness it is not my role to make others happy uh my the story I tell is the basis of my life why do I want it and what do I want but it comes not by magic, but universal law. The Knight of Cups, Ace of, Ace of Wands, and Seven of Cups. God, clarify this message. Put it in one beautiful bow. Allow no room for doubt or confusions. How can we take responsibility for our life and our vibrational alignment to get to the life of our dreams? Allow no room for doubt or confusion, God. Please give us just one card to wrap all of this up. Sorry it got so long, but I do feel like it was necessary. So the oh, <laughs> the card that came out is a leap, 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 leap. You go first. The universe will catch you again. Taking responsibility. Thank you, God. I really love this. I want to say this is an action card. And remember, guys, I want you to remember that we're changing the way that we look at faith. Just because I'm telling you to take responsibility, it doesn't mean that you have to, like, start doing all this crazy stuff. That's not what I'm asking you, angel number 5001. It's about making, being conscious of your actions and making intentional actions and intentional decisions. You know what I'm saying? It's a difference. Like, you, I don't, you know, whatever. Let me stop. <laughs> Because I don't want y'all to just be like, well, you told me to take action. Yeah, but take action in alignment with your intentions. You know, you're taking actions with your intentions, okay? You go first, the universe will catch you. Life bends for the courageous. The universe wants to support you, but first you need to leap. To throw your life up in the air. Perhaps you know what you are being called to leap towards or away from, but you are scared to make the move. Or maybe perhaps you are waiting for a big fat sign or instruction manual or permission to do so. If this is you, then this card is your sign and permission slip to take a deep breath and leap into the unknown. It's scary to let go of all that we know in hopes for something new. And it is normal to feel anxious at the thought of letting go of what we know for sure. But this is the unavoidable process of rising. And right now, this is how you are being called to live. Nature is constantly showing us how to live with courage. Fall comes every year and encourages the trees to loosen their grip, to allow what once was so full of life to fall away leaf by leaf. For a moment, it feels like nothing will grow again. The branches are left bare without the comfort of what once was. But in the morning of new spring, new shoots begin to appear and something new is born that is even more glorious before. You go first, take a good run up and leap. Angel number 5140. Guys, last summer, maybe it mean last fall, or maybe it was a couple of fall. Anyways, one time I was walking Cuddy, and I want to say it was, I want to say it was last winter. And you know, like typically the leaves fall, the leaves are bare, but it was this one tree that was full of dead leaves. Like the lead, the whole tree was full of leaves but all the leaves were dead and shriveled on it and the tree looked so bad like it was just almost worse than if the tree was bare and it was like this physical representation of what happens when you refuse when you refuse to let go of what you no longer lead what happens when you just hold on to things it makes you it not only makes you feel dead inside you look dead to the universe you're not signaling anything new but if you just allow things to fall away and strip it bare and stand naked like those leaves, then the universe can follow up and give you what you need. You hear what I'm saying? I feel like what God is saying is trust me to be vulnerable with me. And for me, as I was reading this, um, for me, again, it's like changing the leap of faith. My leap of faith is not me just applying for another job because I've been getting, when I tell y'all, I have been getting so many job offers like left and right. Not job offers, but opportunities to apply. But they're all corporate jobs. They're all out of alignment of where I want to go. And I keep saying no. I keep, I literally just put in my mind, like, I'm not applying for another corporate job. I'm going to stand here until the right opportunity presents itself. 
because that is my signal. I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to pour into all of my creative powers I mean, all the things that I love. And then I'm going to wait until God deliver me the undeniable answer. Okay. Um, so again, it's every, every leap of faith is not like jumping out the window. Sometimes the leap of faith is standing your ground, surrendering into the unknown and trusting that God will deliver you a result. Okay. And so number 53 for the faith. We are at the end of this reading. If you have made it to the end of this reading and it was beneficial for you, please give me a thumbs up. If you made it to the end of this reading and you are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Um, and to wrap this on up, this new moon in Libra is just all about us taking responsibility for our life, us taking responsibility for the stories that we tell ourselves about becoming spiritual beings. God is saying that it is not our role to make other people happy. But it is our role to decide what we do and what we don't want. We can change our life easily and it's not going to come by magic, but by universal law. So go ahead and leap and trust God to deliver you. All right, y'all. That is it. I will see you guys again. Until we meet again, dream those dreams. Never let the internet rush you and never, ever, ever let someone tell you what you cannot do. See you soon. Bye.